I've been a full-time artist for 10 years and thought it about time I start sharing my painting techniques and adventures. Subscribe to join me every week for a window into my art life. Welcome back to another episode of Art Life. This week I am in my new studio. Wait, no, 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 we're not going to be touring it yet. We're going to be waiting until I have sorted my life out before I start talking about how we're going to build and design this studio. This week we're doing a book club. <laughs> The only problem is all of my books are in like a million boxes so now how to find the right book to talk about in book club. Yeah this is gonna take a while. <laughs> it's got to be in this one because we've been through a uh -huh. The Last Box, What Painting Is by James Elkins. Very excited to talk about this book this week. So firstly, James Elkins is an amazing art historian and art critic. I have always really identified with his writings on painting. Um, actually, in like 2012, when I was doing my bachelor's, um, I actually wrote to him regarding my dissertation and he wrote back and our correspondence became the subject matter for my um, dissertation. So. Thanks for that, James. Um, so what painting is, is essentially about alchemy. So it looks at the practice of alchemy and the practice of painting, and Elkins talks about it in a way which really connects alchemy and painting in the way we can relate to the chemistry of alchemy and the chemistry of an artist in the studio mixing pigments and making paintings in what essentially is um, water and stones, which is how he introduces the book, minerals. Um, I found in reading this, the way he talks about the alchemical studio practice of an artist almost being magical, there was a kind of an unusual way of talking about painting which really drew me in and the whole book is so helpful. A few bits that stood out for me were the way it says it's not a book about paintings, but about the act of painting and the kinds of thought that are taken to be embedded in the paint itself. When I was studying this for my master's as well a few years ago, it took me down a journey of thinking that the gestures I make in paint um, have their own representation of what I'm feeling as the artist. It made me think that instead of just using a blue and making decisions instinctively, there was more meaning behind them. And it in its own way was alchemical because there was a reaction. It was explosive sometimes. It had uh, emotion and the gestures represented so much more than just uh, the basic paint that you'd get out of a tube. There's so much more to the process and Elkins really explores that beautifully. So I'm going to read you a little excerpt here in the uh, first chapter, A Short Course in Forgetting Chemistry. So it says, painting is alchemy. Its materials are worked out with knowledge of their properties. By blind experiment, by the feel of the paint, a painter knows what to do by the tug of the brush as it pulls through a mixture of oils, by the look of coloured slurries on the palette. Drawing is a matter of touch, the pressure of the charcoal on slightly yielding paper, the sticky slip of the oil crayon between the fingers. It almost makes you feel the tacitility and the factor of what you're using. The, the materiality of the paint becomes almost magical when Elkins talks about it like this. I am going to include a few links at the bottom of this video to some reviews on the book if you don't just want to take my word for it um, because it's a really interesting read if you are interested in gesture and the process of painting. I know that a lot of people on my video have liked some of the studio tours I've done and the studio side of my practice. The artist studio is a magical realm and Elkins definitely goes into that with this book. Another little excerpt. In the end, what is painting? It's the framed object, it's the entourage of historical meanings, the gossip about the painter, the ledgers and letters and files and reports and reviews, the books it inspires, maybe it's a verb, a name for what happens when paint moves across a blank surface. Um, neither is complete without the other. So Elkins, as an art historian, he loves painting, he looks at painting and understands the language, um, but essentially an artist brings this object into the world and then it creates many different conversations. Many things happen after you finish a painting and let it loose in the world. And that I think is the alchemy of it, for me anyway. Um, 
what happened when I was researching this book was I got really into gestural painting. My work became a lot more abstract and it became very focused on my experience in the studio, mixing my own paints like a mad scientist, getting the raw pigments, learning about the way pigments come together to make paint in history and in the present. Maybe that's another episode we could go into, the history of pigments of paint. Um, so while I was studying this book and referring to it, some huge paintings came out of this in my studio and we made a few videos about the paintings and I thought it'd be quite cool to share one of those with you. Um, basically, I was going into wild nature. I was just trying to capture expansive uh, gestures of paint. Um, and this is the video. And it's just an interesting way to see how in reading a book as a painter, particularly by someone who's interested in the history and the technicalities of painting in an alchemical way um yeah it became a phenomenon phenomenology it's a it's a whole subject that we could go into with painting and this was the painting i made it's called summit it's about the journey into a great mountainscape but keep a look out for how i i do my gestures because i was constantly thinking about this book when i was painting it so i hope you enjoy the video actually looking through the archive for this week um, into my big alchemical painting I found some um, footage of how I actually make my paints and how I grind my pigments and use my pigments to make paintings so maybe next week I could share some more about that with you as well as some history of pigment painting uh, pigments of paint um, yeah artists who have made their own paints in history I'll, I'll look into it this week um but until then please like and subscribe um go back and watch some videos if you haven't seen them already i think we've got like a good amount now maybe like 20 22 um yeah how time flies when you're having fun um so yeah i will see you on monday tune in every monday uh, for more art live content and yeah bye thanks for watching